Gigi Baraiti reading Foodwise tonight, continuing with my section on advertising. We were talking about coffee, um, and I will continue now talking about tap water. You might have noticed I'm reading just a paragraph or two paragraphs a night. The book itself is actually not including the <clears throat> the blind, uh, the hidden references, excuse me. Uh, the book is uh, 206 pages with the recipes, but, uh, but there's only, well, about 147 or so pages of text. I'm on page 84. I actually think we're going to be in lockdown for a long time, unless people follow the advice in the second article that I'm posting here. Just wear the mask. Okay, so here we go. Wait, this isn't reasonable. My identity is tied up with the fact that I drink a particular beverage. Well, it's looking that way. And other examples make even less sense. Take tap water. Even in the United States, where tap water is generally safe, chlorination, fluoridation issues notwithstanding, we consume billions of bottles of packaged water each year. We've made bottled water our number one beverage, spending $18 billion on 13.7 billion gallons in 2017, over 42 gallons per person. All the plastic in these bottles creates a serious environmental waste problem, not to mention the energy consumed in manufacturing transport. With water, advertising has managed to take a mostly readily available free resource and turn it into a designer item, convincing consumers that it tastes better, is better for us, and we're better people for drinking it. Say farewell to municipally monitored tap water. Say hello to expensive plastic bottles of pretty much the same stuff. In fact, much bottled water is actually from a tap. But we congratulate ourselves when we buy a bottle of water at the concession stand. Hey, we're not buying soda pop. Just like with coffee, there's a certain identity we think we acquire by being bottled water drinkers. So the articles tonight are looking alternatively at um, the uncertainty in food supply chains. Tremendous uncertainty. In this article, the narrative is talking about farmers that uh, literally have to drive up to independent restaurants knock on the door or read a sign to see if it's even open. And so there's not even last minute cancellations. There's no cancellations. It's just, there's no demand. They're closing. This article suggests, I don't know, in some respects, maybe even at the drop of a hat, if uh, one worker uh, tests positive for COVID virus, I find this ironic as I vlogged in the last few nights that out the other, on the other hand, I have students who uh, are completely unprotected as workers in restaurants and the expectation is that they're going to come into work no matter what, which is not acceptable. And the other article looks at maybe how food habits, food preferences are changing. More organic, um, we read a lot about that. Um, and more cooking at home, uh, significant greater amount of cooking at, at home and fresher foods and meals, simpler meals. I don't know. See what you think.